Look at this beautiful horn, an informative video made by Faust Fumo. Did I mention I like Fumos and Roger Jamal? You should like Fumos too. And in return for your affection, Fumos will do many things, like becoming your artifact in Slay the Spire, or teaching you about graph theory through games, or making an in-depth analysis of every healing ego in Limbus Company. What a nice breakdown that took months of research on the subject matter. Wouldn't it suck if someone waited two weeks and, after one evening of Excel spreadsheets, would send she association after it? Well, straighten your posture and lock in, because it's exactly what I'm going to do. As much as I respect Wellwaiter, I wouldn't be able to bring myself to make a tier list on anything. Reason being, tier lists, by design, give up a degree of precision. I'm supposed to believe the best position of tier B is much worse than the worst position of tier A, meanwhile the best and worst positions within tier A don't have a difference that big. It's good when you're trying to consider everything while maintaining a degree of subjectivity about it. Uh, for example, I personally put Solar Yershu slightly above Soda Hong Lu for the reason of Solar Yershu not using the ego resource it gives, allowing for a conversion of ego resources. But conversion is a utility and not healing, thus I shouldn't really consider it. Therefore, I'd like there to be a more rigid system in place to control myself first and foremost, and just like my most watched video, it's going to include advanced math. It's hard to pinpoint where to even begin, but the problem with rigid systems is they're more often than not one-dimensional. Just like in my most watched video, I've rounded clashing of the entire identity skit into a single number that can be used for comparing things, I'm going to do the same with healing egos. Usually it involves one of two things you can do. You either separate your set into parts with a distinct property in each, or you assign each property a weight of its value, which would then allow values of different properties to be added together and then compared. If you have missed the visuals in this part, go rewatch them. If you didn't, you already know what I'm going to do, so let's get to doing it. First, I would like to check for myself whether Lust, Gloom and Pride are really the most contested ego resources and how exactly contested they are specifically for healing sinners' health or sanity. Even though it might be wrong, for ease of understanding, hard math should have a simple foundation. And this is the foundation I'm going to give. Ego resource is contested because it's spent to use an ego that fulfills a purpose of healing. As of now, we only have an implicit understanding of what is good, but in the end all options that provide healing are valid until graded, and therefore their ego resource costs contribute to contest. Meaning, I'm going to add every single ego resource cost of every ego that fits a certain criterion and by the results judge how much a particular ego resource is in demand compared to others. What's more, if ego's healing for some reason comes only from its corrosion, then a corrosion cost will be used, inflating that ego resource demand even further. Counting 4th March Flame Rodion, AEDD Heathcliff and Land of Illusion Hong Lu as healing egos feels deeply and viscerally wrong, but I didn't count them myself in time, so now I have to respect Velvator's work. Also, don't you worry, as the end results will make you feel wrong as well. Here I'm sharing tortures I go through, so subscribe for more tortures and maybe you'll learn something along the way. And this is the results split between health healing egos and sanity healing egos. Realm of Sanity healing doesn't have anything really odd, although the degree of demand for lust and pride is not at the level of gloom demand, but uh, these are just as you would expect. On the other hand, ego resource demand for healing health doesn't take that much gloom. It takes a lot, but how did people miss this gluttony demand? I'll tell you how. It comes from effervescent corrosion corrosions that no one would think to use to heal, and yet they do, thus creating demand, thus inflating the gluttony stones. The real question is, what am I going to do with these sums of ego resources? 
Well, this is another simple layer of foundation. Demand for ego resource directly correlates with its relative value. Therefore, by multiplying ego resource cost of a single ego by the total demand of said ego resource, I claim I'll get to measure costs of different egos relative to each other. Meaning I'll be able to compare them and tell that not only one ego is more expensive, but by how much. Since there are a lot of numbers, I'll scroll them past, so slow the video down if you want to see something special. Here they are, and there they go. Quick, dirty, and completely incomprehensible to a layman. To make it comprehensible, I'm going to put out some oddities you might find curious. For example, this is the converted cost of fluid sac Faust and all egos which converted cost is greater than fluid sac Faust. What you should notice is how few egos capable of healing cost more than fluid sac of Faust, so if you wanted a heavy excuse to not use it, it costs a lot is an option. For another example, these are the cheapest options you can use to recover health or sanity, and if you have watched Valverde's video, you should be able to split these into two categories of their own. Who didn't work shall not eat, and being cheap is really convenient. Why would I need all of this? Well, what would you prefer? To heal 12% of HP for 5 ego resources, or 22% of HP for 10? And therefore, for the final measure, I need to determine how much health or sanity is getting healed at all per converted ego cost. Do not take it as a rallying call to dispose of everything an iota weaker than the best option, but do keep in mind that using something way worse may hurt your optimizing brain more. Extra limitations include only healing received from ego and for passives the turn immediately after using Ego is counted. The best conditionals will be used, unless we're talking about point flips, by which a base rule from my most watched video will be used instead. If you need a reminder, by multiplying the amount healed by heads by the probability of heads, the amount healed by tails by the probability of tails, and adding the two together, will give a number that is the meanest average over infinity of time and players using this ego. Fluid sac healing more sanity on heads? Bias roll. Lifetime 2 Sinclair healing only on heads? Bias roll. Soda Honlu doing very different things on heads and tails? Bias roll. La Sangre de Sancho, Lantern Gregor, Fervescent Corrosion, Corrosion's healing from damage dealt, which varies from coin toss? Bias roll. Wing beat Ishmael having all of this? Pass rule, averages, and iterative calculations. Also, absolute value of health of every sinner will be set to Valverator's certified 208, and every percentage value will be converted using this value of health. This means this video will be outdated as soon as season 6 will roll in, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for my convenience. Now, make sure there is nothing breakable in your immediate vicinity, because what you are about to see may cause a rampage. To explain immediate oddities you may have found here, Bygone Days restores only 5 sanity from its passive and the rest comes from punching the uninvited, which can only take so many punches. 
Christmas Nightmare of Gregor. Uh, I would rather immediately bring up its health ratio as well, because this is the only point where I do believe Velvader have missed by a landslide. It recovers only 15 sanity to self, which in the sanity game isn't a lot, and its health recovery has fixed number like Soda Honglu and is corrosion only. I understand its general utility, but as a healing ego, for healing it costs almost like the fluid sack and does less than Soda Honglu with it. What an absolute letdown. Don Quixote, you're in Mercola's sanity heal comes from the passive, which is capped per turn with 10, and I did specify that I'll only count yields from the turn immediately following, so let it be a warning if you were in danger of thinking that my logic knows all outcomes. Lastly, an unexpectedly high efficiency of Soda Ryoshu is explainable by its very low converted ego resource cost, and it can trigger its own kill effect twice, recovering a fair bit of sanity between all sinners, which becomes rather efficient. I swear I'm not tweaking numbers to favor the ego I have a little bias towards, and I would have asked you to do your homework if you have done the homework from the previous video. For all mentions of how I'm wrong, there wasn't even a single nerd in the comment to do math on whether one 3-star identity every 2 weeks allows for infinite resource accumulation or not. The point is, I'm sure you would get the same result as me and would be as baffled as well while you're watching this video. Anyway, sanity healing efficiency, this was the appetizer for horrors to behold. Now it's time for the main dish. First, Yasunyata Tadrupam of Heathcliff. As you should know by now, after recovering from Stagger, passive of this ego raises Heathcliff's max health by 15% and then heals him by up to 25% of new max health. Which isn't enough to warrant a use as a health healing option for Heathcliff, but as an added bonus to the most efficient sanity healer in the game, it's just nice to have. Next, Egos of Sinclair. Not counting the requirement of skill to hit with Ego where it will kill, Sinner number 11 probably should just take away the title of the best healer from Faust, as he either does a lot more or for way less. Relative to this monstrously efficient healing options, Lifetimes 2 now feels wasteful in comparison. Don't get me wrong, this is decent, but it's in hands of a boy with this and has to directly compete for the exact same slot as this. I'll probably dock another point from Belvedere's score. These two should have been at least two tiers apart, but they're only one and not even that far. 
With Herodion's healing options, I wouldn't take it as one being superior over the other, and more of a question of how much would you need that healing? Or in other words, if you have both Faust and her fluid sack, use Pursuance. If you are not using Faust, then not using her sack, use Hexnail. And above all, look what ego resources would be easier to get in your team and circumstances. Wing beats low effectiveness explained by its utter unreliability. Do remember, this average doesn't count only situations where you've got all heads, it counts every instance of tails too and put them together using a base roll. If you flip 70% chance 5 times, your odds to fail at least once grow with each flip. On the other hand, this is also how Gacha's song cost Palsy work. Your odds to not hit a 2% chance over 2 tries are themselves 2%, but also you'll find yourself on the 2% end of the stick more often than you would like, and you would always like to find yourself there less. Now the time to talk about both Mercalus in terms of healing, because Don Quixote is Mercala, heals health on corrosion only, and said healing is capped at 10 flat per target hit, and flat health heals are always rough. Mersol, even worse because Corrosions is the only way he gets any healing out of this ego at all, and the healing equals to bleed damage dealt to allies, and since we don't have a bleed as a charge anywhere, this cannot happen at all, period, leaving Mersault with visible 25 flat healing. Even so, the Honlu once in a blue moon heals more, and Mercalli is supposed to be a WOW! Also, La Sangre de Sancho barely heals anything at all, but we all have probably expected that. Speaking of Sodo Honlu, he continues to piss on everyone in general and in Esgu Soup in particular, because in the grandest scheme of things he manages to convert ego resources to healing better than Wing Beat Ishmael by a strand of hair. If you hear that anywhere else, that person will be crucified, but this is where it feels deeply and viscerally wrong. This is a horror to behold and the rampage cost. This is the moment where I claim I'm 100% right, when I'm looking ridiculously wrong. This is how well Raider defended last time Susan Claire when, uh, wait, that's actually about AEDD Heath, we've been here six times. Never mind, false alarm, I've got you worked up over nothing. By the way, this is all the Honlu's real efficiency. What's left? Oh, fourth March Flame kills that much at 12 long absolute wrath resonance. Count how often does that occur? And the outlier of Thoracal Gear Faust being that low, how did this happen? Same as Sanity Heal of Mercalo Dawn, 12% of max health across all sooner is all you'll get after single ego use and the next turn. Obviously you would need to wait for a bit, preferably use it in modes where lots of turns pass like refractional railway, but within the first turn you'll get 1% of health per sinner whom you have 6 of and another 1% because you keep them more poised than the entirety of From Software's portfolio. Uh, the torture of waiting. And that's pretty much it. The algorithm has been tested, tempered and stored, ready to accept any and every healing ego our El Director might throw at us in the future. I don't know how to end this video, especially after making joke on Velvator's behalf, as if I'm going to grade him like a student. But then I thought, why not grade him anyway? I'll see at what point did he put a less effective ego above a more effective one, and then count hits and misses. And my final judgment is...